the 31. The intensity in both these players' faces, Scott. They're dead serious right now. You can tell they've been waiting to start this season. And get ready for a lot of pitch. And this is one of those matchups. When you see it on your schedule, none of the matchups are going to be easy. But when you see a Stevie J and a Spot Me Please, like Spot said, you know you're in for a dogfight. Both of these guys have the ability to beat any player in the world. They're top notch. And getting a win over one another is a great way to start your season and build a lot of momentum. Herschel can't go anywhere. Back to back carries. That's going to make it a third and 11. And that's one of the keys when you're facing one of these run gods. If you can get them in third and long, that makes them a little uncomfortable. See if he goes the air on third and 11. He'll get in the gun. Bunch to the right. Jerry Rice is solo to the left. Mariota needs to get 11 for Stevie J. And a nice find, sharp along the boundary, and that'll give him a new set of downs. This is that corner strike play, Scott. You got both your outside receivers running corner routes. If you don't have deep cloud flats or bud zones out there on the sideline, you're going to give that up all day. That was Elvis Dumerville in coverage. Couldn't get over. And now here's the pitch. This time it's able to eke out one. Three carries for no yards so far in the running game. That's some Stevie J being able to compete at this level. I mean, both of these guys. Stevie J, a full time student at UCF studying psychology able to really make some noise this season and we know spot me please he's got a full time job and a family and able to compete at a high level finds the goat Jerry Rice there to bring him a first down and he will not abandon this run I can guarantee you that got two games going on at once want to remind you and blocky all the way down in the red zone and he's going to strike first over Prodigy, a bit of a revenge game between those two. Yeah, when you say that, it, it's really because Prodigy beat Blocky in the online elimination of the Madden Challenge in a win and get in game. So Prodigy went on to make the final four in the Madden Challenge, but in order to do that, he had to eliminate his good friend Blocky from that tournament. So little history between those two. Very familiar with each other, too. Probably the two most quiet guys. It's not quiet on the right side as Herschel finally gets free. And just like that, Stevie J is in the red zone. And I told you, he's no way will he abandon this run. As he knows at some point he can get free. It's gonna be a lot of pitch and a lot of dive from him in the single back tight slots formation. It's a very popular offense. They say Stevie J is probably the best at running this offense. Quick drop. Looking to go to the air on first down. Mixing it, it up. And Mariota. Got to be careful. Covers up and goes down at the five. What he does after this cut is right here. See how he, he starts covering the ball, Scott? He holds the RB button. Just going to put your quarterback in that cover up type animation. Keep you less susceptible to fumbling. That was just perfect stick work by Stevie to cut the defender and then cover the ball up. Already nearly three minutes gone by. That's the key to these guys that like to run the ball. They play ball control. And he's gained a little bit over four yards per carry. That's going to make him second and goal. You can get really stingy down here in the dead zone. Yeah, down here, this is where Stevie's offense kind of excels. He likes to run the ball anyway. These inside outside run concepts. Be really pain to stop. You got to watch the pitch left here. Stretch. Gonna stretch it this time. Walker cuts it back, and Stevie J is on the board. Bob in his head. Knows he just put together a prolific drive against a top competitor and spot me, please. And boy, is that Herschel Walker made some noise in all of Ultimate League so far. You got to do that. You got to pay attention to what players these guys are using. If you don't have time to do the research on. Who should I plug into my salary cap squad? Who should I go get on the auction house? Pay attention to what players these guys have out on the field because they've done all that research research for you. Ten plays, 68 yards. 
taking up three minutes and 17 seconds. Take a look at it again. Great lead block on the outside by Laramie Tunzel. Guy from Old Miss. Former number one first round draft pick clearing the way. That's Stevie J's controller. He's got a nice controller there. Line green casing. First and ten. See if Spot Me can answer. And he'll go to McKinnon. Haven't seen a lot of McKinnon in the league. But some of these guys that like to pass around the yard, they'll go with a speed back. That's sort of that complimentary because they know that they can also use them in the passing game. What, what, what Spot Me also does is not having a back that's really good at breaking tackles or Sack there, making defenders miss. He keeps his ball carrier coaching adjustment on conservative, which means you're not going to break as many tackles, but you're very less likely to fumble. And I think that fits Spotty's game plan. Yes. Stevie J, which is one of his favorite players, mentioned three guys, and one of them was Duke Riley, and he came in on the sack there. Third and 16. Nice playmaker to Warfield, the legend from the Dolphins. That was a big first down. Nobody in sight. That was a hotty dotty playmaker right there by Spotty. And you know that, that, that was calculated. He, he knew he was going through that the whole time. Hit the corner. Got both feet down. And just like that, he's in plus territory at the 39. Spotty is just so prolific passing the ball. You rarely ever see him make a bad read. And I'm telling you, he can run the ball, too. We talk a lot about his passing game, but he'll mix up his formations. He'll get his halfback involved. Got to really balance the pass. McKinnon, nowhere to go. Second and nine over here. We're going to double box it as Prodigy has found his way down in the red zone at the nine-yard line in the second and five, trying to tie the game up versus Blocky. You know, Block, he, he tries to stay in this aggressive pass rush. He, he says this D-line is the key to his game, getting pressure on the quarterback. Prodigy's already drawn him offside three times so far in this game, so Prodigy well prepared for that aggressive pass rush. So that's the end of the quarter between Spot Me and Stevie J in a seven-point game, although Spot Me's on a drive. So we'll go to third and two right here. Under 70 seconds to go in the first. He needs two to move the chains. On the ground to Henry. He gets two and more. Touchdown, Prodigy. I talked to both of these players. I, I went up to the stage and talked to them right before the game. They, they told me that they lab with each other all the time. They're very familiar with each other's games. They play a lot online. And I asked him, I said, guys, when you play online, who gets the better of it? Like, who's got the winning record here? Neither one of them would throw the other one under the bus. They kind of just smiled it off and said, oh, it, it's even. So I, I, I try to get it out of them, but. Uh, you, these guys are pretty quiet. They like to let their games do the talking. Take a look at it again on third and two. Henry cuts it back, ties it up. You're not going to see a lot of motion out of these guys either. Eight play, 63 yard drive. And Prodigy able to tie things up. And now Blocky, after a great opening drive, will hit the flats. He has Derrick Henry as well. And he'll find his way out of bounds. Both of these guys have had such cool seasons. You got Blocky just finally makes it here to, you know, a major. He, he got to represent his favorite team in the club, in the club championship, the Miami Dolphins, which is. A big deal for him. Came a member of Top Madden, then Prodigy in his first year competing, made the Madden Challenge, made a final four run there. Finds himself in Ultimate League on a on the Team Noble Esports organization. It's a good first year for both of these guys. Prodigy three and one in live events for the 19-year-old rookie. Lives just up the road in Fontana. California, not too far from her Ultimate League Studios. Be careful with the strip animation. We'll get to the 34. The other side 
Start of the second quarter will be second and six for Blocky. And a 7-7 ball game in the opener of the Ultimate League here in the Elite Conference. And on the bottom, spot me please, although he's on a drive, trails by seven to Stevie J. Remember when we left Spot Me Please and Stevie J at the end of the first. Spot Me had the ball on the 13 yard line here in the Elite B. Part of the Ultimate League. Spot Me trying to answer. Barely got in. Number 15 of 16 players. Had a good run in the club championship to punch his ticket here to LA. 180,000 in his Madden career in the MCS era. Only about 11,000 this year. It's been a disappointing Madden 18, but he can change the narrative right here. Five minutes to go in the half. First and 10. High formation. And McKinnon will dot the eye on the stretch play and can't get away. I think it's interesting that you talk about spot me and you know how much he's made this year. He said, like we talked about, this is a guy with a lot of responsibility, works full time as a credit analyst. He had a newborn baby boy. It is, you know, he's, he's married and he said, you know, he told Holly two, his wife Holly two years ago, hey, can you just give me a chance to try this Madden thing out? I know I got a lot Let's going go! on. Oh, and it's picked it off. Needed that. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. And so Thank Stevie you. will take over on the 17. The story I was trying to say, though, is it, it, did that work out, though? Props to Mrs. Spot Me for giving him a chance to go out and chase his dreams because he's made a lot of money d doing it. Not, not as much this year, but the Madden Classic last year, like you said, the Madden Championship. Before that, he was at EA Play at the Madden Championship, the first ever Madden Championship, made a final eight run. Yeah, 135,000 and a belt, and there's Blocky. Blocky just one and one in live events. Hasn't yet to fill out the resume, but he's adding to it right here. Seven plays, 66 yards, and a touchdown. That game is going back and forth and back and forth. I don't think either one of them stopped each other yet. And that's what you'll get a lot of times when it's two guys that are very familiar with each other. They know how to move the ball and it can often come down. Who's going to make that pivotal mistake? Great return. Yeah, there for Prodigy. Look at that again. It's that post route on that PA post play. <laughs> Look at Prodigy's reaction. Not happy about letting that one up. Let's take a look at Spot Me and Stevie. Saw the interception in the end zone. Stevie J. Chance to go to work. Gets out of the pocket. But a great job containing Mariota. It's a gain of one. Stevie J, you just need to find a way to get down the field, get yourself in field goal range, put some points, make this two possessions. Herschel made a man miss, got away from another. Maybe got two. It's going to be a third and seven. Herschel Walker, it's just such a good combination of speed and power with his 92 speed rating, and then he also has a 90 trucking rating to go on top of it. Von Miller. Able to get in there on third down. Now you got a fourth and 13, and maybe a decision to make for someone who's primary a runner. Bottom seven the dogs. Seven nothing. After the turnover by Spot Me. Just Steve, you want to punt this ball? We'll put Prater in as his punter. Kick it away. So that's where Spot Me will go to work at the 24. So let's transition over to Blocky and Prodigy. It's a 14 to 7 game. There are three minutes left.
So first and ten. Hands it to Henry. And Henry will get to the 39. Seven carries for 15. Here at the two minute warning, seven point game. Really a back and forth, a, a, a stop or a turnover in this one would be huge. And there is Henry working to the 25. So a seven point game. He's on the edge of the red zone here. Under two to go. Two guys to the left, Ingram to the right. Gets out of the pistol, he's now up under center. Hands it off to Henry, and he goes nowhere. He'll drop him for a loss to two. Let's get a game update. Well, guys, spot me, please, looking to get back in this thing early. He is going to go deep to the right side. Paul Warfield with the catch, cut up the right sideline all the way to the house. 7-7, seven, seven, just over two minutes left in the first half. The Hall of Famer, Paul Warfield, making an impact here in the Ultimate League. Second and 12 from the 27 after the loss of two. Deshaun hit once again, back-to-back -back losses. There's that pressure from Blocky, Scotty. To ask him about, he says, what's the key to your game? He says, generating pressure with my defensive line. And you see it right there. 30-19 now to 34. Don't want to get out of field goal range. And a nice job playmaker up the field to Julio. And with 59 seconds left in the half. You got to think you would take three here, RG. Go and get the points. And it's up and it is good. 14 to 10. 55 seconds remaining in the first half. To 22. And he just covers up with, with Walker. So four point game blocky with an opportunity here before the half RG to create some space. So blocky you got to be careful here you have no timeouts 52 seconds you can take a couple of shots but you cannot turn this ball over. Mariota to Henry Henry. That's where he gets dangerous. If he can get away from that with a truck stick. He's seven for seven with Mariota for 112 yards here in the first half. Marcus Mariota, the 2014 Heisman Award winner, one of the most popular quarterbacks we've seen in all of this ultimate league. And it, let's be real, it's that speed, mobility, it, it just kills in Madden. I mean, accuracy is cute, it's important. But when you got a guy that can slang the rock in, you know, get you out of some of those tight situations where you need to scramble it's just such a big advantage finds Westbrook remember he has no timeout so that clock on the move ball down in the 33s in field goal range bunch to the right prodigy needs to send the dogs here they come and he'll throw it to the outside of Walker and he'll gain two and it looked like he got out of bounds that was nasty I thought he was going to throw it out of bounds Instead, just finds the out route, rolls out of bounds to stop the clock. Blocky got up his sleeve here. Can't take a sack. And he'll just throw this one away. And boy, that was awfully close to being in the tackle box. What he did is he put the receiver on a smoke screen, so he knew if he threw it away, there's at least a receiver Somebody in the in area. That direction. Yeah, good call. That was smart. If you send them all vertical and try to throw it away, you'll, you'll, you'll get the penalty. We might see that again. No one in the area. Smart move. There he goes again with it. And this will take about four or five seconds off the clock. Thing up the seam. With no timeouts. I mean, if, the, if he had a timeout. Had to be a he, touchdown, yeah. That's a smart move. I've never seen somebody kill clock like that before. That, that was really interesting. 
That was strategic scum right there by Blocky, and I like it. 48 yarder before the half, and it is good. Perfect. So he keeps it at a touchdown lead between Blocky and Prodigy. And over on the other side in the waning seconds of the second half at a 7-7 game, Spot Me's got a third and one at the 41. Trips tied in. With the momentum of this game, Spot Me throws an interception on the goal, on the goal line. Goes to the bunch, has a block. There goes McKinnon. McKinnon. Tight runs. Oh! Touchdown. Touchdown, Spot Me. Devin Avenue. When you can swag on your tiptoes like that, Coltrane. I was trying to tell you you could run the ball, too. That's a blocking out in front. And McKinnon, tight ropes. And you know what? McKinnon with that 91 speed, but also has that 94 agility, showing it off on that tight rope right there. That is best Fred Flintstone impression. I like when you see people being able to keep the stick work, not go out of bounds during that tight rope walk in them. Look see at the this. block. Look at Julio crush Jeez. Wilson. And right here, Agassa! And that was just Renfro trying to come over with a hit stick. Able to slip away. Three timeouts left for Stevie. He's given up 14 unanswered. Man, I was trying to talk about it. That's rough. You get the pick on the goal line, you're up seven nothing, going to make it two possessions. We do a game break and come back and now spot me's up seven. Out of bounds at the 50. They need about 15 more yards getting field goal range. He's got Prater and Greg the leg. Using Prater here today. These guys have a maximum of a 70 man roster with 34 active players, and he's going to use his first time out here at the 45. Interested to spot me, he's using his bait. He's known for using this little small controller, little custom controller. Can't really tell if he brought it with him to the potty. I don't think he'd go anywhere without that little kit controller. I bought one of those. They're convenient, they work all right. Chow gives me a hard time when I try to play with it, but I, I think the control is fine. Third and five. Got inspired by Spot and try to. Hey, when you got a belt, <laughs> I don't care what you're playing with. You got the respect already. They can't take that away from you. Third and five. Low throw and Jerry Rice. The ball was behind him, but the goat pulls it in. Only has one timeout. This is Stevie's controller, I told you. He's got a nice controller, too. Here's the long field goal, 55 yards before the half. Prater! And it is up, and it is good. 14 to 10 at the half. So a good first half all the way around in both our sets of games. 17 to 10 between Blocky and Prodigy over there in Division A and down in Division B of the Elite Conference. 14 to 10 between Spot Me and Stevie J. Start of the third. 14 to 10 between Spot Me and Stevie J. The toughest division, hands down, in the Ultimate League is this elite Division B. Yeah, that division's insane. You got three belts between Skimbo and Spot Me. You throw a young Kiv and Stevie J into the mix. Woo! Remember, Kiv's already on top of the division. He's 1 0. Oh. After that Disney. Game of the week matchup where he beat Skimbo. Yeah, that was the division when these were, we saw all the different Ultimate League divisions of both the Legend and the League Conference. That was the one where everybody kind of had their eye on it. Like, oh, that looks like a tough one. So Spot Me will get it first to start the second half. 
Mariota had all day to throw the football. Playmakers him up and finds Warfield. The man with a gold jacket all the way down to the 36. How big has Warfield been in the league? Nasty right there. I thought he was going to throw the deep corner route to B instead just playmakers Warfield. He's a member of those 72 Dolphins. Undefeated. Only team to ever go undefeated. Sorry, RG. 18 and 1, huh? One giant loss. <laughs> it, was a, it was. It was a giant loss indeed. Down to the 28. Second and two. Was that the year they had Moss? Moss on that squad? Of course. That was unreal. Only time Brady had a Brilliant Brilliant receiver worth, worth talking about. <laughs> you could throw Gronk in there, of course, but he's a tight end. Down the 26 now. It's a fresh set of downs here on the opening drive for Spot Me. Oh, Taylor Robinson, man, when he came on the scene. Great story. Made it to the final eight there in Madden 16. We were out there and we were here in L.A. Not too far. We're downtown in the Staples Center. Ended up being a problem, I believe. Problem. Fullback dived him. Still probably sees it in his nightmares. Second and ten. I think in that game, the, the biggest mistake that Spot me learned from, and you can tell this is it was his rookie season, first sure. time on the main stage. So try to take a knee before the half. Safety. On his own, like one or two yard line, and he needed into a safety. It was just, it was rough that changed the game. I mean, he was playing so good all tournament long. And it's a small mental mistake, but he said he learned from that, and you know that was his first time on the big stage. Got, got a little nervous. Part of our red zone coverage, double boxes. Prodigy has found his way down to the 15. So we got first and 10 on the right at the 14, third and one on the left at the 15. One score games on both sides. Do you expect anything less here in the Ultimate League? I mean, these are close and good games, but. You got to remember these players are this is early in the season. This is all, all these players playing their first game of a 10 game season. So you know the intensity is not as high as it usually is. They're still kind of you know feeling each other out. They're, they're feeling what roster moves they like. And, um, you can expect to see all these guys evolve and adapt as the season goes on. And, and things will probably get a lot more intense as you start to realize those playoff scenarios and the buy situations. And, going to be interesting. These guys will play each other again at the end of the year. Nice read option on the right. Spot me. Pulling out the bag of tricks. As he's got two rushing touchdowns now for the gunslinger from West Virginia. 88 speed Mariota Snowbeast. But it didn't work. He goes up two possessions. So Prodigy punches in as well. Double box, double scores. 17-17 on the left and 21 to 10. Spot me. The big score to open the half. And this, this Prodigy blocking game, he just knew it was going to be a good one. Let's yeah. go full screen here with Blocky and Prodigy. Remember, Blocky was one of the favorites in that club championship. A lot of people thought he was going to make some serious noise. And the, the only problem we ran into was Michael Skimbo. Had prepared for three months just to play him. Had been preparing for three months because they were in the same division. Skimbo representing the Patriots, Blocky representing the Dolphins. Skip knew we would have had to play Blocky. And Skimbo obsessively prepared for Blocky, ended up winning that game. But all the energy he put into Blocky might have hurt him. Late in that tournament when he uh, lost the problem. His first time ever losing a problem there in MCS play, too. He was 3 0 against them before that. This is Blocky's second year for the 21 year old on a second 11. The highest he ever finished was 33rd at the challenge at Madden 17. He's 1 1 in live events. 
won his first round in the club championship and then he ran into a buzzsaw as you mentioned by the name of Skimbo really dismantled him with that that sort of pistol pre-snap same formation you're seeing right now third and five and he takes a page at a <laughs> Skimbo's playbook and you, you talked about it you played for a long time RG you, you see something that you want to add to your game I'll take that one thing and and put it into my arsenal you need to do that and I hope our viewers at home are, are doing that any type of scum tactic that you see these guys rocking with that they're having success with you, you need to look at it understand it and implement it if need be and if not implement and to at least understand what they're doing so you can go practice against it and be ready to stop it key snake there on third and short that'll make it first and ten move the chains now in plus territory at the forty nine. This is the number 16 player in the world blocky with the ball. If you remember problem beat deliverance in Minnesota that eliminated deliverance from the ultimate league. And he problem also announced that blocky was in and he's also in top Madden dot com. Yeah, that was a cool a WWE moment blocky. But his ultimate league life and problems hands and problem comes through for him. Blocky said he was having a crazy watch party at his house during that game with the whole family there. They knew what was at stake. And I would have loved to be in a, a fly on the wall in that room because it must have gone intense in the Blocky household. Able to pick up the first down at the 36 now. Great block and pass protection. Gave him enough time to. Find his man downfield. Throwing it to the side, and there's Westbrook. All the way at the 11 yard line, he's in the red zone. Just good execution from Blocky. Rolls out, stops, sets his feet, and the lead pass leads one to the outside, lets it rip. That was a solid, solid execution right there, Cole. 13 of 15 through the air now. This time it goes to the ground, and hello, Henry gets blown up. Really testing himself here. And remember, Prodigy, when he made that final four run at the Madden Challenge, that was in Mutt Draft, not salary cap. So, this is the first time we're seeing Prodigy on the main stage playing in a salary cap type format. A little H2O break as they are five minutes away from seeing who's going to get off to a good start there in the Division A of the Elite Conference. 17 to 17. And spot me, please, and Stevie J, it's an 11 point game. Start of the fourth quarter. Here between Blocky and Prodigy, down in the red zone at the 12-yard line. And a tie game. Five minutes left in this one. These guys know a lot about each other. They let their games do the talking. They don't do a lot of talking. Not a lot of emotion. But knowing getting off to a hot start will be big. Blocky's got it at the 12. It's going to be a second and 11 after Derrick Henry got blown up and we got red zone coverage on the right side of Stevie J trying to make this a one possession game. Herschel Walker has 23 carries for 66 yards for Stevie J on the right side of your screen. Third and 10 for Stevie J. Second and 11 on the left hand side. Henry oh, gets to the edge. And touchdown Blocky untouched. Can Stevie J do the same? Can he find pay dirt? He's going to run with Mariota. Boom. Ooh. Got to kick the three. Got to make this a one possession game if you're Stevie J. How about Blocky? Every time it feels like we check in on young Blocky, he's just out there executing. And he fakes it. Mariota. He's going scum. And he's in. 
Ew, run that back. Let me get a replay at some point. That was dirty. All the way down to a fourth and six, and he faked it. Wow. Look See at that this. replay. Yes, yeah, can you receive? Just couldn't get out there. Oh, that's so smart. And so often, everybody wants to go for the kick block, and we talk about kicking it perfect. Another thing you can do against people that are trying to block your kick is those fake plays have a high success chance. And Stevie J just not scared to run one and reaps the benefits. That was Spot me, nasty. please. We'll have a chance to answer. Oh, my goodness. Here comes Warfield the gets loose. Can he get on his horse? Got to be past Renfro. And he'll run out of bounds at the 31 yard line. What a return for Spot Me. That touchdown ends up being even bigger for Stevie now because if Spot Me kicks the field goal, he gets with that big return. At least it's still only a one possession game. Here's, Here's the, the fake. And now, what that does, Scott, is if you're a competitor going up against Stevie J, you need to be aware that if you go for that field goal block, he's not scared to fake you and hit you for the big play. So that might make his opponents more scared to try to block his kick, which could work in his benefit. Didn't chase the points. Didn't go for two. So it's a four-point game after the long return by Spot Me. He's going to have a second and three. 350 to go. Man, that, that fake is like, that's the type of play, if you don't get it and you're like a real-life head coach, you'll get yourself fired. And let me set the narrative here. That was to here. make it one possession. Sure. Let me set the narrative here in the Elite Conference Division B and why this game is so important. You lose this one, and you got killed and Skimbo next on your schedule. Can't afford to go 0 and 1 because you could find yourself 0 and 3. Yeah, and all the competitors in that division, they say that same thing. They say this is so tough. Each game is as important as the next. And it, it, it's scary when you know that each one of your games there is no pushover. A lot of stress going on in that division right now. First and 10 at the 13. Well, he is eating this clock. Hands it off to McKinnon. Plenty of space. Good game. They'll mark him at the six, second and three. And I love how Spotby's game plan is to stay on that conservative ball carrier setting. He's so less likely to fumble. And it's good because he doesn't try to do a lot of trucking or juking. And if he does do a move, it's the steerable moves, which aren't a fake out or a broken tackle anyway. Those aren't affected by the conservative ball carrier setting. So that, that's rarely smart by Spotby to just stay on that conservative setting, limit turnovers. And the next snap will be after the two minute warning. Be a big third and three coming up from the six yard line between Spot Me and Stevie J. Stevie's got to hold him to three. Good play. He'll run the play. Fight. Felt confident. I think he got it. He doesn't it have it. In inches. Wow. Now he came out like a lot of Madden players do, and he thought he was going to run it to the two minute warning, but quick snapped, saw the front that he liked, and almost picked up the first down. You got to go, right? You got to try to end the game right here. Yeah, why not? You got your opponent backed up, and here it goes. This is going to be a QB sneak situation. Can they get leverage up front? No! He's he got it! it. He gets oh, back on his feet! No! I had it! Oh. Mariota oh, fighting! Man. Oh, Untouched! Oh, DDJ's defender just caught up in the traffic and he could have just got through the hole and touched Mariota. It's his ball and he's back in the building. Can still hold the door. Uses a timeout, 155 to go. That was wild. Oh, that was crazy. Now Spot looking to make it two possessions, and even if he doesn't get in, gets to kill more clock. You might see three sneaks here, but watch for McKinnon in the eye. Kill, kill, kill. Double tight end. Play, 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 play. This is going to be a handoff to McKinnon. Doesn't get a block. I was praising his O-line earlier. 
But Gerald Hawkins, just a core silver there at guard, couldn't make the block. And they tell me offensive line doesn't matter. A big fat whiff that would have led to a touchdown. The read option. And no. Stevie getting stinge. If you're diabolical, this is two down territory. It would force CBJ to have to go 98 yards to win. I think that's the move. I mean, we saw him go for it on fourth down once already. Pitches it. There it is. He's in. And he uses the pitch to score on the pitch master, Stevie J. How about that? Gives him a taste of his own medicine. I don't think, I don't think we ever hit him with the playbooks. He had Stevie J running that Houston offense with the Baltimore defense. Spot me was running that Seattle Seahawks offense with that multiple defense. 11 point game now. It's two score. And that Prodigy and Blocky game, they were both using West Coast offense with the Chiefs defense. See the touchdown run again. I mean, chalk it up. Game of inches. Stevie's got to score quickly now. Primarily a runner. Got to open up the playbook. And Herschel Walker has had a tough day. Let's get a game update. Guys, it's been a really close back and forth matchup all game between Blocky and Prodigy. But here, under two minutes left in the fourth, on the run commit, Blocky gets into the end zone, up 34-17. Looks like he's going to take the dub. Yeah, Dave, 17 unanswered there by Blocky. Looks like he's going to lock in his first win. Second and nine here. Mariota all day. Low throw to Rice. You got to get your motor going here. He's nine for nine, but he needs more, more downfield, RG. It's a good read, though, by Stevie. I thought the corner route was open, but Spot me ran over there to take it away. Stevie didn't force it. Mariota covers up. Remember, no timeouts. Ball at the 47. And a two score game. Mariota, quick drop, take off again. Gets a block, had some room, can't get out of bounds. I'd rather have two less yards and that clock stopped. Yeah, I agree. He's gonna kick the field goal here. Smart play by Stevie, he's gonna need an onside kick after he puts the trifecta through. It's an eight point game, one possession, 31 seconds, and now it's time for some mad magic. The old gods or the new. And it's picked up. Ooh. Spot me's gonna get the dub. Good game. Man, that was GG's wow. all around. Spot me will move to 14 and 5 overall in live events. 75% winning. And Spot Me gets the opportunity. He threw a pick early. Came back with 14 unanswered to take the lead and does a nice job on that bread drive, closing it out. The big play for Stevie and that was on that fourth and one, fourth and inches. Mariota gets stopped short, but no defender can get in and just down him. Gets back to his feet, gets the big first down, and eventually turns into spot me please points. Those are just the type of plays you need to make for Stevie. And remember, this is a good time for us to talk about point differential, where it could come into play. You're asking, well, what is Prodigy doing right now? Well, going to come down and get seven. That might be the difference between making the playoffs or, or missing a spot. Yeah, points no, matter. Yeah, points do matter. If you if there's a, a tiebreaker at the end of the season and, and you and your opponent have, have a tied head-to-head -head record, and the, the next thing you go to is point differential. We haven't seen it come into play yet, but very well could be a thing here in the ultimate league. No timeouts, got to get to the line here. Final play of the game. Blocky's going to get the dub. Can Prodigy get the points? The answer to that is no. 17 point win for Blocky. Able to get a little bit of revenge over Prodigy, who knocked him out earlier in the year by a score of 23 to 10 comes back in a big way and
Blocky after that loss to Skimbo in the club championship looked really good against Prodigy. 34 to 17, spot me with a 28 to 20 victory over Stevie J. Let's go to Adrian Lawrence who's standing by with spot me please. Thanks, Scott. Spot me, congratulations on the win. You got three rushing touchdowns and usually a man in the air. What was your strategy here? Hey, anytime I get in the red zone, I like to run the ball a lot more. It's, uh, you know, the windows are tight down there, so throwing it's a little risky. I showed down on the first possession, I threw a, a pick in the red zone, so I didn't want that to happen again, and uh, it worked out for me later in the game. Indeed it did, and maybe your experience played a role in it. I know you've been playing Madden since, what, 99? And Stevie J is 2005. How much leverage do you think that gave you? Uh, it's, it's, you know, playing for that many years, you, you learn a lot, and then playing on the competitive scene, you know, you, you stay calm in certain situations, and it definitely pays off. And in terms of this competition, we had spoken before the match, and you said, you know, 16 of the best Madden players in the world, and that it would be a dogfight. Who are you looking forward to fighting the most? I think uh, I got to look straight to my division, uh, both uh, Skimbo and uh, Young Kiv. They're both really good players, so it, it should be fun playing them. All right. Well, best of luck, and congrats again. Thank you. Back to you.